Hi, Ramel, welcome. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? How you doing? How you doing, how you doing? Doing well, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we've got the community members coming in. My name is Tawana Rivers. I know you've been talking to Cherie. Yep. Um, she was not able to join us tonight. I am the Chief Operating Officer here at the 10K Project and super excited to talk to you and to hear all about buying storage facilities. Absolutely. So I cannot wait for you to put us up on game. Um, the community members are super excited to, to hear about this opportunity. And for anyone joining us for the first time, we are the 10K Project. We're a community of investors who are also learning how to build wealth. Uh, we believe that generational wealth is more than just a slogan on a t-shirt. And here at the 10K Project, we bring amazing entrepreneurs to the community to teach us how to do the things that will generate wealth. And so we have an amazing founder with us this evening to talk about buying storage facilities. We see them all over the place. I mean, in my neighborhood, there's like three. And I even said a couple of months ago, why do they need three? Like, <laughs> and, and so Ramel's gonna tell us why they need three. <laughs> Cause I mean, they're so, they're so close together that I was like, how are they even making money with one right so close to the other? So you're gonna answer my question tonight. So I'm excited about that. Um, for anyone new to the community, if you're interested in learning how to build wealth, if you're interested in learning about equity crowdfunding, that is a foundational concept that we talk about here at the 10K Project. Um, every Tuesday, we have what we what have what we have trademarked as Bet on Black Pitches, where we invite Black founders to the community to raise capital. And so, if you're interested in learning more about that, please go to our website, the10kproject.com, and learn more. Uh, you can also join any of our social groups. We are Black 10K across all social, and we would love to have you. Um, come and join our community. But in the meantime, you are here this evening and we do not want to waste time because we got a lot to learn about mm -hmm. buying storage facilities. I did also put Ramel's link uh, for today's academy in the chat. I'll put it in a couple more times throughout the evening. And so if you like what you hear this evening and you wanna learn a little bit more, uh, you can hit him up directly via that link and get all of the details. Um, so with that said, Ramel, why yes, storage yes, yes. facilities? Tell us a little bit about yourself and then tell us why storage facilities. Yes, thank you for having me. I, I totally appreciate uh, the opportunity to share your platform and give out this information. So I'm excited. You know, so I want to thank you uh, for being able to share this platform. So my name is Romel New Worlds. I'm 30 years old, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I've been in the real estate business for the last eight years. Um, started out in the residential space. So buying two families, three families, four families. And for the last two years, I've transitioned over to commercial real estate and now I'm full-fledged a self-storage investor, right? So just to give you a little bit of background, right? Um, you know, when I first started out in real estate, I was marketing, I was sending out letters, I was trying to find so many opportunities, just like, you know, the everyday investor. And I ended up coming across a family that was going through a pre-foreclosure. So I'm pretty sure everybody's here familiar with a, a pre-foreclosure. If you're not, that's when somebody who owns a property, they fall behind in their payments and that a bank is uh, going through the process to take that property back, right? So I was able to get in between this transaction and um, we did a short sale, right? So I was able to get the property in a contract. It's a two-family brownstone I'm from Brooklyn. So for those of you, if you're from, I see somebody said they're from Los Angeles. Um, so you know, like these, these properties are pricey, like LA, New York, Boston, these properties are very, very pricey. And this two family brownstone, I was able to get under contract for $590,000, right? And at this time, I was only 25 years old. I was, I was making $50,000 a year. I was a sales rep at Pepsi um, and I was raising the money, right? I was going, to, I applied for mortgages, got denied. So what I ended up doing is going to a meetup. I went to over 50 meetups in my area. I would go on Eventbrite and type in real estate meetups and I would bring my business card, introduce myself, and show this contract for this deal because I knew it was a lot of money in it. And I ended up meeting someone who became my mentor and a capital partner of mine. So what that means is he, he was able to come and invest with me, put up the entire $590,000. I put no money out of my pocket. He put up the entire $590,000 under one stipulation. I had to give him 50% equity in the project. So he got 50% ownership. 
That same property, we purchased it for $590,000. We put about twenty, we put about $40,000 in renovations and it sold it for $1.2 million. I made six figures in real estate my very first deal. So just, it, it changed my mindset of really seeing that this, this actually works. So from that point on, I continuously bought more properties, another two family, a four family, a six unit, a 10 unit, apartment buildings. And what happened in 2020, the pandemic happened, right? So I had like at least 40% of my tenants stop paying their rent. And at this point, I have about, I had about 40 doors at that point and 40% of my tenants stopped paying their rent. And now I'm stuck with paying the mortgage, taxes, insurance, water bill, sewer and maintenance, but I'm not collecting any cash flow. Right. So then I started to brainstorm and think, how, how could I, um, you know, get some capital going so that I won't be too debt heavy and I can start bringing in some more cash right now. And that's when I started to sell a lot of my properties. Right. Because at that time, 2020, the market was sky, interest rates so low. We could, over, you know, people buying properties for over asking price. And one of my properties was a two family. I had a buyer who was willing to pay me twenty thousand dollars more than what I was asking for. The only thing is he required me to deliver him the property vacant and it had a tenant in it. Oh, and wow. one of the tenants, he, he didn't have no place to go. So I offer him cash for keys. I said, hey, I'm going to give you uh, $2,000. You hand over the keys and you go. He said, all right, but I need you to put my items in a storage unit until I find another place to stay. And that's when I got introduced to the storage business because as I was looking for a storage unit, I couldn't find, everything was sold out. Like nothing was available in my area. And I said, why is this business so um, in demand? I need to figure out how to be on this side of the business. The light bulb went off. Um, I, that's when I jumped the mentorship, started really learning, and went out and purchased my first self-storage facility back in 2020, an 88-unit facility. Now I have over 300 units total, but it, it's day and night. And the reason why, and I'm going to get into it today. We're going to get into it. I'm just giving you all a little bit of background. So now that I'm on the self-storage side, I don't have to deal with tenants living in my units. I don't have to deal with plumbing. I don't have to deal with bathroom on kitchens, toilets, trash. I'm literally getting all the benefits of real estate, which is cash flow, appreciation, equity, tax advantages, but I don't have to deal with the people, you know, day to day. And I have multiple streams out of it. So that's kind of my story and how I got started and why I believe everybody should get into the self storage business. Wow. First of all, in two years, 300 yeah. storage units. Yeah. Wow, you've been hustling. Oh, you've yeah, been, yeah. Hustling, you've hustling. been doing your thing thing. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, so where do I start? Um after you after the first deal, right? And you had the investor. Once you started getting in your subsequent deals, did you have to continue to get in investors or did you make enough money on that first deal that you were able to kind of do it on your own? Good questions. I, I actually continuously brought in partners and investors, right? Because I understood I can actually do more bringing other people in. I, I love the fact that I was able to buy real estate and use other people's money. I put no money out of my pocket. I was just more hands-on. I brought the deal to the table. Why not duplicate that same process and keep my cash in my account as leverage, but I still brought on other investors and I continuously uh, built my portfolio. Very good. Okay, that's good to know. So, so you said you don't have to deal with tenants, right? So, so it sounds like the storage business is a little more low maintenance, but there are still problems and challenges, right? I watch storage wars, right? So I, <laughs> so I know sometimes you get stuck with people not paying, right? And their stuff becomes your problem. Talk to us a little bit about the, some of the challenges in this business. Absolutely. So, you know, every business has challenges, right? So when I say we do, technically we do have tenants because tenants actually rent out the storage units. We just don't have tenants that live inside the units. So there's not a lot of wear and tear versus if you rent out an apartment, you got people using the bathroom, the kitchen, running up and down. It's wear and tear on your property as it goes. And then when that tenant leaves out in a year or two, you need to spend a bunch of money to renovate the unit to get another tenant in it. So you're always chasing that dollar versus on a storage unit side, when it's time to renovate a unit, I mean, when it's time to turn over a unit, all we need to do is power wash, sweep mop, and that's it. It's, it, it, it's low maintenance, right? Now, the beautiful thing is that we go by lien laws, right? So in the apartment space, there's, there's eviction laws, 
and in the storage space is lien laws. So if there's a tenant that falls behind on their rent, all we do is send them out a 30 day notice and let them know that they're behind on their rent. And if they don't pay within 30 days, I put a lock, uh, we call it an overlock. So we put a lock on top of their lock so they can't get into their unit. And at that point, we can now call the auction company and then the auction company comes, like you said, storage, storage wars. Um, and then they'll do an auction off for everything in that unit. What, what a lien law means, we have a lien on the unit for the amount that's owed. So whatever, whatever revenue is generated from that auction, I can now take out whatever is owed from, from, from that tenant. So that's the beautiful thing about it. Um, you know, I have mentors of mine that have problems because like in LA, for example, there's like a lot of homeless um, this is, is, a, is a homeless problem, right? So you get a lot of homeless people who try to sneak in and, you know, they're sleeping around at the storage facility. Um, you would have things like that where people try to break in, but that's, that's any, that's any business, uh, but we have a way around it. Okay. Okay. Um, Calvin says, is insurance high in the storage business? Um, it, it's, it's relative. It, it's, it depends on what you consider high, right? So and, and just like regular residential real estate, based upon the area, right? If you're in a flood zone, it's going to cost your insurance is going to be higher. If you're not, you know, and based upon the taxes and all of that stuff is going to contribute. But, you know, it's, it's similar to any other real estate purchase. You know, insurance is not going to be a, a killer. Now, well, this is what we do. Um, we require all of our tenants to have renter's insurance, okay. which means if something happens to your belongings in a unit, we're not responsible. You have insurance. However, we have we have a partnership with the insurance company where we now get paid every single month that you, that you pay your insurance. So this is just different wow. cool things that we like to put in place. That that is absolutely a cool thing. Yes. So I'm sure all storage facilities are not created equal, right? I I talked about the three in my neighborhood. One is kind of I mean, is outside, right? It's got the gate you drive in. The other one is an inside unit. I see on one of them, they talk about the fact that um, the units themselves are like air controlled. So tell us a little bit about kind of how the different units um, are set up and are there any that are more desirable? Yeah, so me personally, the, the, the storage units that I own are outdoor facilities that you drive up to, right? Um, Non-climate control. So what that means is, you know, when you have the indoor climate control, they actually keep the temperature under a certain amount. So if it's cold or if it's hot, it's always going to be controlled. That keeps your belongings um, it, it, less wear and tear, right? Versus when you have a drive-up facility, and if you're in New York and it's snowing, now you have, you know, your items that's in there is going to become cold and might freeze, depending on what you have in there. So somebody would pay more, a tenant would pay more money to rent out a unit that's inside and that it's climate control because of those benefits. Um, but it's cheaper, obviously, like if you if you buy a facility that does not have those benefits, most people don't really care. You got a, a small percentage of tenants that actually care whether or not it's climate control, or whether the unit is inside. They just want to make sure that they can get a you know good bang for their buck. Um, but as far as like different layouts of storage facility, storage facilities, now you have big franchises, right? And then you have independents. The big franchises, you think about public storage, you think about CubeSmart, you think about extra space, right? Um, you think about U-Haul. These are the big boys. I don't deal with the big boys. The big boys are the competition. And most people don't even believe it, but only 20% of the storage business is the big boys. The other 80% is independent mom and pop owners, small independent mom and pop owners that own some storage facilities and you can have you know, outdoor drive up access. Every single facility ha has a different layout. So if you think about an apartment building, you have one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, the price varies based upon how many bedrooms is in that apartment. Same thing when in the storage industry, right? You have five by 10s, 10 by 20s, uh, 15 by 25. Each unit has a different size, which determines a different price. And um, the unit size will drive the demand of that facility. So um, typically 10 by 15s are like the average size unit, one bedroom. That's what most people usually rent out. So you'll, you'll have that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You have, you have facilities, like for, for me specifically, right? All of my facilities are outdoor. 
right? Non-climate control, but I have it where it's automated and you know, we have the keypad code. So we don't, I, we don't have too much hands-on because they go online and the tenant could book their unit online. When they book, they automatically get an email with their code. So that code, they go in, punch it into the, the keypad and it can go right to their unit. We don't need to have anybody that's working in the facility. We have the cameras and then we have a call center with virtual assistants that manage the cameras. So it's just really, I love it because it's, it's, it's hands-on. That was going to be my next question is managing 300 facilities. How does that work from a staffing standpoint? But you just answered that. So, 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 so my, I'm, I'm only familiar with the driving facilities that have the person living on site, right? Um, you've got the, the office worker living on site. So none of your, none of your facilities are like that. Only one, we have a U-Haul, we have a U-Haul representative um, that works inside the office. So what happens is with, with, with that facility, we have a partnership with U-Haul where they just run the transportation service. So the trucks, um, the truck rentals, um, the hand carts, boxes, supplies, tape, scissors, re all of that retail services, U-Haul does it. And then they just give me a 30% commission every single month because they run it out of my facility. But that's the only one that I actually have manpower that works there, but I don't manage that manpower. U-Haul manages that. I just now get a commission every month because it's based on um, ran out of my facility. I am all the way sold on this. I'm all <laughs> the way, you hear me? I'm all the way sold on this. Okay, so tell us about, so I put the link in to your academy. Tell us about what you're offering at the academy. How can we get involved in this? Absolutely. So I'm, I, I love it because, you know, this is, I built something that I, I, that I, that I needed growing up. As I was building my business, I was thinking about everything that I did not get and how I could take it and implement it into this community, right? So uh, it's called Mailbox Me and the Academy, the number one commercial real estate credit mentorship program. And what I teach is how to go out there and buy commercial real estate, apartment buildings and self-storage. But I teach how to creatively purchase these assets so you don't have to come to the table with no money out of your pocket. A lot of people have this misconception where they think, oh, storage facility, 300 units, I need five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars of my own money. That's not true, right? So I teach you how to creatively build your business the right way, get access to business credit cards, business lines of credit, how to raise capital, syndicate. So these, this is one of the cool things that I teach, right? And I love talking about it. So every single year, I have a, a family legacy meeting, right? That's what it's called, family legacy meeting, where I have you know all my aunts, cousins, brothers, sisters. I bring everybody in one room, right? And we teach financial literacy. I make sure that everybody, before you come to the meeting, have your credit report pulled. So we gotta, we gotta be able to see your credit profile, what we need to do to fix it. Also, everybody needs to come with an LLC. So now when everybody come together, they show the credit report LLC, we pick the top people who do have the best credit and we put them on an the LLC and we go get funding. And then we use that funding together to put down payments on facilities. So that's what I teach in my academy, um, I also teach about the SBA. So, you know, most of us, if we, we're not familiar with the SBA, Small Business Administration, I teach how to go out there and get um, different loans where you only got to put 10% down, um, you know, how to evaluate, how to, how, to, how to manage these facilities, everything you need from A to Z. But ultimately, we have a community and we also have a, a personal development platform as well, because I'm going to be completely honest with you, right? You know, you know, like you're, you're in this space you know, typically only five to 7% of people that purchase courses and join these programs see success. Most people don't see success. And the reason why they don't see success is because you, you're telling people to do something and they missing out on the, the foundational skills, right? Which is having a routine, having discipline, the characteristics, like really building out a, a clear plan. So we have a personal development division where we take you through that journey and hold you accountable so that you can be the best entrepreneur when we give you these strategies and you can execute without having a second guess, without having fear and thinking about, oh, I'm going to fail, you know? Um, but yeah, I could go on and on about it, but that's pretty much the gist of what we put together in the Mailbox Me in the Academy. Very nice. So, you know, I, I, can, I can respect everything about what you just shared and absolutely love it. So my business partner and I started a private equity firm earlier this year where we buy cash flowing businesses. Um, and, and it's the same concept, being able to buy these businesses without using any of your own capital. 
in many situations. And so I'm laughing because I see a few of my investors in the participant list. I know my phone's going to ring when we are done <laughs> because I got a feeling we want a couple of storage units now. Um, so we're definitely going to be talking. Um, I, I think this is really, really amazing. What does the average, no, I've got another question before that one. Are all of your facilities locally to you? No. So you're um, all across the country with the facilities? Yeah, so I have one in Pennsylvania, I have one in Tennessee, and then I purchased one in Arkansas in, Jan in July. So they're all crossed out. However, again, you know, as I broke it down to you, is is not a lot of hands-on management, but I have hired a, a management company. So they pretty much go to the facility two, three times out the week, manage everything, and I can kind of do it from afar, but I am spread out. Wonderful. What is the average cost like what what's a good price for for is, is, if that's a difficult question to answer i understand that but what's an average cost for a storage facility it's not an average cost it just depends on you know how much how big of a facility do you want to buy right so you could buy a, a, a 10 bedroom mansion if you want or you could buy a two bedroom. like it depends on what you want to do so it's the same thing with the self-storage industry if you want to buy a 400 unit facility or you could buy as little as a 20 or 40 unit facility. One of my students purchased a 44 unit facility and she paid 250,000 for it. So, you know, you could go that route or like I, I bought a 109 unit facility and I paid 750,000. So it just really depends um, on, on your spending power and how much of a, how big of a facility you want to acquire. Very good. Yeah. Any questions for Ramel? Let's get it. Let's get it. Tracy and Lakeen, I already know. I already know. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> what are some questions you guys have? What's the average cost of your academy? So my academy is $24.97. Um, but actually, I'm going to be doing something special. I want to do something special for everybody in your community. So let's figure out what, what, what we want to do. Um, but I want to give everybody 50% off for your community only. I'll put Woo! together, I'll, I'll, I'll put together, um, I'll put together a coupon code or something like that. I'll get it okay. to you and get it to everybody. Okay. You want to come up with what that coupon code is now and I'll put it in the chat for them? Yeah, let's Even see. Even though it's not ready yet? Let's see. Let's say like, just keep it simple, 10K project? Let's do 10K project. That's it. Keep it real simple. 10K project. 10K. We'll do two words, 10K, one word, project, two words. Yep. Capital K, capital P. Yep, yep, let's do it. Look at that, discount code 10K project. Nice. Thank you so much for that, 50% off. That's what's up. Awesome. Oh my goodness, okay. What, so, so you focus on storage units now. What's next for you? That's an amazing question. So I'm gonna be completely real with you, right? You know, my goal is to ultimately become a, a private lender. You know, I, I wanna get to the point where I'm not personally buying these facilities and because the 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 real person that owns these items, or owns these assets is the bank. Let's just be real here, right? Like if you go and you buy a house, you buy, you know, a facility, you buy anything. If you go in and get a mortgage, the bank, owns the asset your benefit from it because you're running it as a business and you're going to cash flow from it but if things go left like the bank owns it so you know my goal is to build up enough cash flow and capital and, and, and um resources to where i can lend out to my to my community right so any of my students that found this facility and they need funding i'm going to be the lender on it right so we don't need to go to the banks we could do this ourselves anybody that have any opportunities that's that's ultimately my goal to get to the point where we truly build our own bank you know we have our own capital and it's not going to be me by myself you know we need a collective group of individuals to better come together and understand these strategies and lend out so that's really what's next for me that's that's my five-year plan um but for right now you know we're building up that that asset column that net worth that equity and then you know we'll get to that point no, I love that plan. I love that. Like I said, I, I have a private micro private equity firm and, um, you know, we raise 
capital for our customers and clients who are trying to buy cash flowing businesses. And so in our model, we're eliminating the bank. So we're raising enough capital for them so that they're able to buy your storage unit outright, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And they so so and, and and so what's happening is they get to be a business owner. We've got a group of investors that get to have equity in some situations and other situations, just one one great ROI they're able to get as, as a result of it. And so, you know, we're, I'm, we're, we're excited about models like yours because what they do is exactly what we're trying to do as a 10K project community is we're trying to build wealth, long-term wealth. And as long as the bank owns the asset, we're not getting as much as we can, right? It, 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 they, get, they get the most of it, right? Because that interest is going to kill you in any bank deal. And so, you know, we're able, in, in our organization, we're able to give our investors as high as 20% interest on their, on their money. Yeah, look mm. at that face. Y'all see that face? Y'all yeah, see that face he just made? Because that's ridiculous that that's we're able insane. to give 20%. <laughs> right. <laughs> We know, <laughs> we know, yeah. but, but you got to do it, right? The banks could do it if they wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. They give us what, 0.3%, all that garbage. They could give us way more than that if they wanted to. And we're really in the business of helping our people get to the next level. So for us, some of this is social consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. Um, it's, it's, it's also to get that engagement up to let people be motivated and know that they can they can truly build wealth you you know we come from a culture where people have to see it in order to believe it unfortunately and so we want our people to see that it's possible so we're giving these these returns because we want them to be motivated by them so they can go out and do continue to do amazing and great things for themselves so absolutely love that lisa said can you please discuss the expenses or repairs or problems that you regularly are responsible for. She said, I've heard people having issues with insect infestations in their storage facilities. Great question, Lisa. Yeah, great question. Um, so like, you can have, like I, I personally never had insect um, issues, anything like that, but we have an exterminator that comes quarterly, right? Because we need to make sure that we keep everything clean. Um, we got to bake out expenses to, to be able to redo the roof. That's one of the, the biggest expenses on a self storage facility. Um, sometimes the doors, right? So people opening and closing those doors, mm -hmm. they'll come off the hinges. We got to replace the doors, um, the gates as well, right? You know, you might have to repair repair the gate because it's electric. You know, we have a system where you punch the code and it opens up. Sometimes that will crash. We got to have somebody come out of tech to come out and, and correct that issue. Um, you know, if the lights go out and we have to replace our, you know, security cameras and lighting, things like that, that come with it. That's kind of one-off things that, you know, typically you don't run into, but from a, from a daily expense standpoint, um, if you're up North, like in Pennsylvania, it snows crazy. It just snowed uh, what last week. We gotta, we gotta take out, um, expenses for shoveling, right. M uh, mowing the grass. You know, if you got if you if you're down in California, if you're in the sunny area, Florida, whatever case maybe we gotta make sure we mow the grass, uh shovel snow, um, cleaning out trash, right? Because a lot of times people move in and out and they'll just leave trash around the units, right? So going through there, having someone that's gonna go take out the trash two, three times a week. Um, and that's pretty much it from an actual daily maintenance. Outside of that, the only expenses that you're gonna have is your payroll, depending on what type of facility you're like, how big of a facility you're running. And then if you have any issues when it comes to your doors, your cameras, your gates, got to put a new roof on, but that's more um, deferred maintenance. Well, great question. Very good question. We've got another question. Anonymous says, are you purchasing family run storage unit businesses or from the big competitors? And you answered that. You want to talk about that again? Yes. Yeah, so I don't deal with the big boys. Um, like, Public storage, extra space, cube smart. No, I, I go completely for independent owners. So yes, family run businesses, small mom and pop owners. That's who I purchase from. Very good. Calvin says, are you typically buying these facilities or building them? If buying them, why do you believe most people are selling them? Great question. So I haven't I haven't gotten into the building um yet, right? I've been only buying existing facilities. And um, the reason why people sell is for different reasons, right? Like, for example, one of the facilities that I, that I just purchased in July, that seller sold the facility because he was going through a divorce. 
And he had to liquidate his assets, right? He's like, yo, my wife don't want to, you know, go, she just want to get to the money, right? You want to cut it in half. So that's his motivation, the divorce. It may be somebody that's been in a business 30, 40 years. They just want to retire and get out of it. So they may sell. Like everybody have a different motivation um, for selling. You know, they may have just completely, you know, another another owner in Pennsylvania that sold me his, his, his facility. He sold it because he had another business that he was running and it was just too much for him to manage both. So he said, yo, I'm going to just get rid of one, you know, business and focus on the other. So it, it, it really varies based upon, you know, that particular person. Good. Um, Beulah said, so, so Beulah says she lives four miles from the front gate of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Um, in Tennessee, she lives in Tennessee and their storage prices, does, are the storage prices desirable um, close to military installation? So she's close to Fort Campbell military base. And so she's asking, what do you know basically about storage facilities close to military bases? Um, and, do, and, and do you have any there or do you know anything about that? So I don't have any near any military bases, but I uh, I know like just from being in the industry and having different partners and mentors, right? Um, that's, where, that's really where you want to buy facilities. Right? You want to buy a facility near these big institutions because that's where the traffic is going to be. You have people moving in and out. It's always going to be an ever-growing population, right? Um, so they'll do things like, you know, anybody that's in the military that rent out the storage unit will get some type of discount, right? You show your ID or whatever the case may be, you know, so we could drive more traffic. You want to buy a facility and see where's the nearest Walmart? Are they, where's the nearest university? Where's the nearest hospital? Mm -hmm. What is, where's the nearest apartment complex? I want to know where's the traffic? Where's the people? Because if I buy in an area where there's no people, where am I going to, who am I going to rent out to, right? And then you got to think about, you know, one of the, and I, I didn't talk about it earlier, but we look at, it's called supply index. That's, that's the formula, supply index, right? So we want to get within a five mile radius, we want to see how many storage units is in this area. So we're going to get the total amount of storage units. And then we're going to divide that by the population of that, you know, five mile radius. When we get that, when we do that number, it needs to be 7% or more. Right. And that's going to determine whether or not it even makes sense because it may not have, we may not have demand for a facility. It may just be a low population and the amount of facilities that's there right now is suffice for that population. So we don't need to go buy nothing or build, but there may be areas like Florida, right. in, in Vegas in Texas, where so many people are moving to those areas and we got to keep building because there's so many people that's coming and it's not enough facilities to manage the amount of people that's there. So, you know, we want to look at those things to determine whether the investment will make sense or not. So based on that supply index formula, it's safe to say that people typically buy storage or rent storage facilities close to home. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And if you notice, right, if you look at these apartment buildings, because typically, you know, we want to buy facilities near apartment complexes, apartment, you know, apartment buildings or any residential places, but they're building these apartment buildings smaller and smaller. Back in the day, you could get a big house, you know, now these apartment buildings, you, I know in New York, you stretch your arms, that's it, you got to want you in a one bedroom apartment, that's it, you're not getting nothing else, you know? So as, as um, these apartments are getting smaller and smaller, but we're still buying things, our families are still growing, we need space for storage. And even in Florida, where so many people are moving down there, but because it's right on the water, there's no basements. Mm -hmm. So where, where, where are we going to rent out? I mean, where are we going to put our extra things? You know, so those are the kind of things that we, we, we want to look at. Very good. Mm -hmm. Got a couple more questions. Jesse says, what about portable storage pods? Would they be value added addition to main facility or would it be more of a headache? No, yes. We, we want to definitely do storage pods. Like that's just... You add in value, you get you just having more ways to create more cash flow on the space that you have. So, you know, we, we do that as well. We buy storage pods as well. Okay. And just put them on the land. Beulah says, do you have partners or consider or who do you consider partners? You talked about some of them, right? So the partnering with the U-Haul for some of the supplies, right? Um, who are some of the other partners? So this is one of the reasons why I love self-storage. I'm about squeezing the most juice out of the lemon, y'all. Like I'm not looking, you know how they say. The, the average man there needs to have seven streams of income, multiple streams. Like I get it, but I'm not trying to do seven different things, right? I just want to be able to make the most out of one thing and spread it out. So uh, with my business model, right, I partner with a vending machine company. So I have vending machines on my facility. 
but I don't manage it. You know, I have a vending machine company that come in and they put the, the drinks and the beverages in, they swap it out. They do everything and just give me a commission, right? So now that's additional revenue. As I told you, you know, the U-Haul, we have a partnership with U-Haul as well. Um, we have an Amazon drop-off as well, where people could drop off the Amazon gifts, okay. I mean, the Amazon packages and deliver it back and we get paid on that, you know? Um, so it's just different things that we'll do to be able to make sure. So also I partner with moving companies. So as people are renting out these units, I refer them out to these different moving companies because I know you're going to need that service as well, right? right. And now we're going to get paid. So I don't have to necessarily manage that new business, but it is my business because I'm going to get you know, a percentage of the profits as long as that business is going and I'm providing all these opportunities. Very good. Anonymous has a great question here. Mm -hmm. Do you store people's cars, boats, RVs, et cetera? Absolutely. 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 Very good. Jesse says, oh, Jesse's saying we should connect you with Tannen Andrews. Tannen Andrews is one of our Black founders who is in the real estate business. I mean, saying to, to make an, in, an introduction between the two of you. I will do exactly that, Jesse. Let me make myself a note. That was good. This is great information. Lisa says, just an FYI, the newer apartments in the DMV area have some limited storage units built in for the tenants to rent. I've been seeing that more and more with the new apartments um, that are being built. But 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 to Ramel's point, still not necessarily enough, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, still not enough. Very. But, that, but that's why, like, even they, they, like they're getting. So when we think about commercial real estate, you know, because you you're into buying cash flowing businesses, right? So with commercial real estate, I look at it as you're buying an income stream, you're buying a business. It's just that the facility is the business, right? The apartment complex is the business. So the value of that facility it goes up based upon the, the net cash flow. So the more cash flow I can pull out of this facility, the higher the value is of my facility because that, that's how I was evaluated. It's not like residential where the value of your, your property is based upon what this property sold for, what Joe's property sold for. And we don't care about that, right? So for that, for that apartment that you talked about, Lisa, the, when they build those storage units in it and they're making more money by renting out those smaller units, that's adding more income and more value to that apartment building where now they're going to be able to sell three to five years from now and make even more money because the valuation is higher. So that's why we like to, you know, that's just a kind of, you know, high level thinking, but that's how we look at the, the asset. Yo, I'm, I'm going to buy this facility. How could I add different streams of income in this facility to, gen, you know, do different things to drink, generate more capital, more revenue, and now I'm going to sell five years from now to a big, you know, REIT or a hedge fund, you know, who don't, they, they just want to buy assets and own. They don't really think right. about pricing, right? Like, you know, and we could cash out and then keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. Um, Anonymous says, can angel investors participate and just receive a modest ROI? With me specifically, unfortunately right now, I don't accept just like angel investors only for my students in my community. So from, from my students in my community, they I do partner with them and they can invest as silent investors and you'll get back a return. I'm I'm I, I'm just to be completely transparent, I'm very, you know, selective as far as who I because you know you know how that go. It can just you gotta have an investor mindset, you know, because do. everything doesn't always happen the way we expect it. We're in this business, we have a plan to make this amount of money, it doesn't happen. Sometimes we make more money. But we gotta understand the business. So I just I like to make sure that anybody that's investing with me, you understand the business first. Mm -hmm. So now we can get we can get busy. That is such a word you just shared because <laughs> sometimes you're right. Sometimes the roof leaks, right? And we thought we had ten thousand dollars in cash mm -hmm. flow, right, monthly, but the roof is nine thousand. So guess what? We only got a thousand dollars in cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. And so you got to make sure you understand that, that this is, you know, there are risks. It's a business. You know, when it's running well, it is going to produce well. But in order for it to continue to produce, you got to take care of it, right? The, the, you know, it's an asset that you have to nurture and take care of and repair when things break and all of those things that cost money. So, so I'm not mad at you for being selective. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work and, and you got to make sure you, you, you take care of you know, not just the asset, but the business model also. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I absolutely respect that. 
Um, Anonymous says, when you have the auction units, who sets up the auction? Now you said it was a company, right? That you work with. Yeah, so legally, I, as the owner of the facility, I cannot be tied in with like managing the auction. So I hire an auction company that comes in and they run and facilitate the entire process. And at the end of the process, whoever wins that auction, it's their responsibility to come into my unit, clean it out, get everything out of there, clean it up so that when I go in there, it's that I can just immediately get it turned over. Um, and whatever I'm owed, let's say I'm owed 250 bucks. I have a lien, so I'm going to take my 250 bucks out of whatever profits that auction company made first. And whatever's after that, they, you know, they keep their profits. Sometimes you don't even make no money because, you know, you don't have, so it just, it really depends. But, you know, to answer that question, I do not set up the auctions myself, no. Okay. So you only, you're only entitled to what they owed you from the back rents. You don't Correct. get a percentage of profits that the auction company makes. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, Anonymous says, where do you find these storage facilities? So um, it's just multiple ways. Number one, I, like the dirty work that most people don't like doing is driving for dollars. So just getting outside, driving around um, and just seeing where the facilities are. Like you'll be surprised. You just get in your car. And if we pay attention, you might see a mom and pop facility just sitting over here in, in a cut. Right. And then I would just Get the name of the facility when you're driving by, Google it, get the phone number, and then call them and reach out. Send a letter and follow up. That's one way. And then another way is Biz Buy Sell. That's a website that um, is a business brokerage website where a lot of people are looking to sell their businesses. And it's not only self-storage. You could buy a restaurant. You could buy you know, trucks, whatever it may be. But these are individuals that's tired and ready to sell their business. A lot of times, self-storage facilities are on there. Um, I also work with brokers. So, you know, I'll make sure I'll let brokers know if there's anything, you can always send me something. Um, and then, you know, just cold calling. I have a team of virtual assistants that every single day they get up and they call all the facilities on a list that day and see if they're interested in selling. And a combination of that, you know, we see what opportunities present themselves. Nice. And surprisingly, you can still find really good businesses on Craigslist also. Do you find that that's a good place? Absolutely. Craigslist as well. Facebook. It's, I, I, I could go on and on. But yes. yes. Craigslist is <laughs> mm -hmm. like people sleep on Craigslist. <laughs> and I, I don't sleep on Craigslist. I, I, be, I sell assets on um, Craigslist. I, I, really? I, I, okay. I did a lot of business. Yep. Very good. Calvin said, are the facilities 24 hours access? And so if so, does that pose a security challenge? So need for more cameras, lighting, maybe even security, guarding. Mm hmm so my facilities are not 24-7 access, only, only my, but we did our facilities that do have 24-7. Um, it does pose, a, a, obviously, a security threat, but, you know, we got the security cameras. I have VAs that I pay, and it's their job to literally watch the cameras all day, right? And, you know, we just hope that we don't have any issues, but I'm, I'm personally not 24 hours, no. Okay. Jesse says, are you allowed to bid at the auction because of the inside info you know that the tenant has and what kind of stuff they may have? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, me, not me technically, but my brother Cub. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my cousin could bid for me, you know? I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Beulah says, your, your, your unit in Tennessee, exactly where is that? Um, that's in Clarksville, Tennessee. Is it oh. Clark? So that's actually close to where you are, Beulah. Yep, close to where you are. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any more questions for Ramel? While the community is coming up with their final questions, I want you to tell us again about the academy. Right? Um, mm -hmm. We know that you have extended to the 10K project, 50% mm -hmm. off of the 24.97 mm -hmm. uh, regular fee. That code, discount code is going to be 10K, so 10, capital K, space, project, capital P. You're going to put that code in the system a little later, so it won't be, it may not be available for you guys right now, but keep trying. Um, yes, uh, I'll get on top of it by like 7.30. I'll have my team on top of it, so y'all be able to take advantage of that code. Awesome. So tell us what, again, the Academy consists of and how the community can benefit from purchasing the Academy. Absolutely. So, you know, as I stated earlier, number one is the community. 
because we can give you all the information. Let's just be honest here, right? We can give you all the information step by step, and then most people still won't take it to that next level. Most people still going to be afraid. Most people are still going to find reasons why it won't work. So it's very important for us to emphasize our personal development platform, where we, we every single Sunday, we focus on helping you prepare your elevator pitch, right? How do you speak with sellers? What questions to ask? Like building up your confidence, you know, you having your identity as an entrepreneur so that you can be the best. So when, you, when we tell you these strategies, you know how to operate, right? Um, after we go through that process on Tuesdays, we have our business funding classes where we're teaching you everything you need to know about credit, how to build your credit profile, how to repair your credit, how to apply for funding, what banks do you go to, how to liquidate your credit cards, all these different creative strategies. And then on Thursdays, we have our classes where we're now evaluating facilities. We're looking at any um, projects that students may bring to the table. We're going through the real estate process. So I, it, I, again, I wanted to make sure that I put in this program what I didn't get when I was starting out, right? And I didn't have somebody to give me a full step-by-step -step roadmap. It was just, hey, buy this course, and then you kind of put the dots together. No, I mean, that's not what we're doing. We want, you have the course. Yes, follow the blueprint. Go through the work. We have homework assignments. I have quizzes. Like, it's not something, like, some people get frustrated. I'm going to be real with y'all. Some people get frustrated because they buy my course, and then they try to skim through it and then realize they can't skim through it because they got to submit an assignment before they can go to the next one. Because I want to hold you accountable. It's easy for you to try to skim and think what you could grab. But when you do homework assignments, when you have a quiz, right? It's testing the fact that you're, you're, you're taking this knowledge, you're understanding it so that now you could go implement it. So we just kind of have a full-fledged uh, blueprint. And when you take that, we not only do we teach you self-storage and commercial real estate, right? We also have guest speakers that come in and you'll get opportunities to make money different ways, whether it's Toro, Airbnb, um, you know, you name it, you know, that's kind of what we do. But, you know, ultimately that's, that's, that's how it goes. Nice. I love that the course holds them accountable. You know, in order to run the successful business, we got to know all the things. And if you've put time and energy in showing us all the things, we got to take the time and learn it, right? That's the least we can do. So often people think buying the course, course is the most important step and it's not. Following through with it is the most important step. Say that again. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Buying the course is not the most important step. Following through with it is. There right. You got to open it. You got to do the assignments. You got to, you know, ask the questions, join the forums that allow you to ask the questions and be engaged. Mm -hmm. We got to get out of this quick money mindset, right? Mm -hmm. We got to get out of that. We got to start thinking about the long game because because generational wealth, right, is mm -hmm. not quick money. It's yeah. strategic. It's definitely strategic. Anonymous says, is there an end, to the, an end date to the coupon code? They're not able to buy it right now, but they definitely would like to do it in the near future. Um, yeah, right. Like it's, I'm only going to make it available through Friday, right? So after that, you know, it's going to be at its original price. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm going to make it available through Friday. Wonderful. I visited the website, but what course is the discount for? Is Calvin's question. It's gonna be you're gonna get the mailbox millionaire um course bundle. Mailbox millionaire course bundle. So that's yeah, credit bundle. and real estate together. It should be $24.97, but when you get the 50% off, whatever that price is, um, but you're gonna see $24.97. Once you punch in the code, it should take 50% off. But give me to give me about 30 minutes. I'll give because I, I wasn't even planning this, it's just something I just threw out there because I'm I like the vibe. I'm, I'm rocking with y'all right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so give me a couple of minutes to get that done. Absolutely love it. We are so grateful. We absolutely are. Any final questions for Ramel? Um, this, is, this is a wonderful cash flowing business model that he's described. I love how he's made as much of it virtual as possible, right? So you don't have to worry about a, a full team on site trying to run the place. I love how he's built the seven streams of income, if not more than that, within the business, right? So he's got the money coming in from the U-Haul, right? He's got the money coming in from the vending machine, all right there on site, right? Any of the partnerships, right? Got the pods that's going to generate a little more income. I, I love how you have taken 
this one model and truly maximized the space. Um, and it's so funny because we just were having this uh, seven streams of income conversation. Um, we had it, we started it about a month ago on one of our lives and then we continued it in our Facebook group uh, where we were talking about, did you have to have passion behind all seven of the streams, you know, all, this, all seven ideas did there have to be passion around it or could some of it just be about making some money? And so we had dialogue about, you know, how you get to these seven, cause it is a heavy lift. You've made it seem like it's not, like you've taken your one space and said, how can I utilize this square footage or the, 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 the relationships that I can build to just get a piece of some pies, right? Mm -hmm right? Just a, a commission from the vending machine, a commission from the U-Haul. You don't need the whole sale price. You just need enough of these um, partnerships that you have your seven streams and then some. And if you do that model at every one of your units, man, like yeah. you've really thought this through. That's what's up. This is, I love, love, love what you've shared with us this evening. If you guys are interested, you have the link, You've got the discount code. Um, how long is the course and what are the hours for the course? So Marie, the um, Marie's asking, how long is the course? So you know, you've got course, all the assignments. So how long? 30 days to get through it? Two weeks? Um, it's for a lifetime, honestly. It's, it's based upon you and how fast you move. Um, I don't give any time frames on it, you know, because you're gonna go through it a few times, honestly. Like you're gonna go through it and go back and keep it. Go, like go keep it. going through it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the first it. time if I'm dedicated. Let's say I'm if, dedicated. If dedicated, I would say I would say six weeks. Okay. Six weeks. Well, if you good. dedicate it and you really take out the time, six weeks you can get through the course. Very good. And so it's very it's a virtual course, Marie. So you can log in anytime you want to, right? Any the morning, noon, or night, you can log in. It's at your pace. Yep. Very good. Good question. Um, Bridget says, oh, would you, I absolutely can, my dear. Let me put the link in there again for you. And I want to, I'm, yeah, let me, I'm gonna have to get you the coupon code, uh, 10K project. That's what we said. We said 10K yeah. project, right? 10K, capital K, space project with a capital P. All right. Yeah. And what I'll do also when I post the video, I'll make sure we put the, the code um, somewhere so it's easy for them to, to, to find it. Okay. We'll either put it in the chat or we'll put it in the, the summary. We'll find, we'll put a place, put it somewhere where people can to know about it. Okay. Amazing. Very good. So I put it in there again, Bridget, for you. Jesse says, so many fantastic Black entrepreneurs come through 10K. Wish I could have joined when I was three years old. Jesse, yeah. I wish I could have started this business when I was three years old. We are learning so much about wealth building. So I'm so glad that Jesse, you find value in what we're doing here. The founders that we come, that we bring through here are literally amazing. I know y'all hear me say that week after week, but when I tell you these brothers and sisters are doing their thing, they are doing it. And Ramel is a good example of the, the quality of entrepreneur we come and we bring to this community to teach you um, how to build wealth, right? You know, anybody we bring here, we, we vet and make sure that they really are doing what they say they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. They're not just taking pictures next to the fancy cars and the fancy houses, mm -hmm. right? They really have the business. The business is solid, right? And so I, I think Ramel showed you that today is that he is about this business. And I love, I love how you took us kind of through your real estate transformational journey, right? How that one story, that one person's reality int introduced you to a whole new industry that you decided to make your home. And so um, that's another lesson for us, right? Is that where you start is not where you finish, mm -hmm. but you got to start. You got to start. I love it. I want to thank you again, uh, Tawana, for even having me here and building this community and giving out this information because I'm a, be completely honest with you, you know, um, most people don't want to give out this information, right? And the people that don't look like us, like they've, they've been doing this for a very long time and they don't want to take out the time to get, give information. And when we come back and we give information, you built a platform the way you have done, most people don't appreciate it because it takes time for you to reach out to my team and we build this together. And, you know, we, we, we go through a lot to make sure that we can provide this value. So it's beautiful to see what you, you've built 
and then see everybody in here appreciating as well. And then just each one, teach one, you take it, you implement, and then you continuously help somebody else. That's truly what this is about. Um, yeah. So again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful. If you need me to come back for anything, just let me know. I right love what you got you. going on. Right back at you, brother. We feel the same way. We, 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 we connect with a lot of people who say, nah, I'm not interested in kind of, you know, coming to your community, but you can come to mine. And it, we got to do this together, right? We got to meet the people wherever they are. For anyone who has not yet gone to the website, you're not a member. When you go to the website and put your, um, in the 10K Project website and put your information in, we actually have a resource sheet with some ways to build wealth in five years. And we've got Ramel's information on that resource sheet um, because we believe what he's doing is powerful and it is absolutely a way to build wealth. And even hearing more now about the model, when you talk about having that, you know, that side business, right? You know, the fact that he's, he's made this virtually um, virtual, right? It, it even is a good starter business, you know, for somebody who may still even have their day job, right? You know, you, you, when I hear that, I really think about this is great for someone who is, who is busy, right? Like many of us are, right? Maybe we have one or two businesses. This is one that the blueprint is already there. And with the guidance you get from the course, you could literally, you know, pop this up and, 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 and or prop this up and, and have this business that, doesn't take 40 hours a week for you to run it um, and then rinse and repeat that thing. So I appreciate this information. Um, you absolutely will be invited back, brother. We got, we got a community to educate. So we absolutely will invite you back. And thank you so much for joining us to the 10K Project community. You guys know how I feel about you. Um, for those of you who've been riding with us for any length of time, I am absolutely in awe of your commitment to building wealth and changing the trajectory of your own lives. And so I thank you for joining us. I thank you for trusting us enough to spend time with us. For anybody who's new this evening, check out our website, the10kproject.com. Come back and visit us. We do these sessions every Monday. They're public sessions, um, you know, just to kind of let you know who we are and what we're about. And we bring amazing founders to come teach you how to build wealth for free, right? This, was, this, this one didn't cost you anything to show up, right? Um, and so this is the kind of opportunity we want you to be exposed to so that you can find what your thing is. We all, we all gravitate towards something different, right? right? That same vending machine company that Ramel is working with, that may be their passion, right? The storage facilities of Ramel's passion. There are other things that other people are doing. We're gonna bring all of those people through here so that you could decide which one of those things are your thing because we want you to build wealth. We want you to live life on your terms. And so if we could help you do that, um, and that is why we are here. And that is what gives us pleasure. That's where our passion is. So with that said, I appreciate you all for joining us this evening. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, tomorrow is our Bet on Black pitch for those who are members. Tomorrow's company is a social justice company. And I really, really want you guys to join us tomorrow. Um, this company is, they, they really touch my spirit in what they're trying to do. Um, and I'll share a personal story with you guys tomorrow about why what they're doing is so important. Uh, but please join us tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern time for our weekly Bet on Black pitch. And with that said, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And I absolutely love you. Um, thank you so much again, Ramel. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay. Good night, everyone.